Hey friends and family, my name is Skylands, and today I want to talk about some really fantastic free-to-play alternatives to paid games. A lot of AAA games and a lot of games that you can spend a decent amount of money on just to even get into the game actually do have fantastic clones or alternatives that offer something more or something more easily accessible uh, at the base entry fee of free. This is actually going to be an episodic series, so I'm not really ranking these based on the absolute best games, but these are going to be five paid games and then five free-to-play versions of those games. They're going to be the same genre. Generally, they're going to be very much inspired from each other, and they're going to be games that I absolutely recommend, and I've played every single one of them. That is going to be the actual AAA game, as well as the free-to-play game extensively. Hopefully you guys have a lot of fun with these titles, with the video, and I'm thinking, uh, you know, hey, try to keep the hype alive. Bump the thumb if you found a game that you didn't see before, and let's go ahead and get into the five. Okay, so the first game I want to talk about is Battlefield, which is probably the most requested series on here. And this is a big series that has a lot of different forms and shapes. And historically, it was a historical shooter, it's a World War One, World War Two era, uh, and it's kind of ebbed and flowed back and forth between uh, different ages. So I've actually got three different games that kind of cover all those facets. But the core of Battlefield is to be big team battle, which means like yeah, eight versus eight and up. Uh, so hopefully we can get up to like 64 players or even more. And it's also mixed via vehicles so you have helicopters, airplanes, tanks, different kind of motorcycles even, and then it also includes infantry combat with all the different classes or roles that you could play within that. Uh, lots of different guns, heavy machine guns, snipers, and that's all in the same match. Team based and generally objective focused, these games are going to be very much in emulation and inspired directly from the Battlefield series. But Battlefield, again, has ranged from historical to futuristic. So I got three games that I think fit within the different niches of what makes a Battlefield fan a fan. The first game I want to talk about is Warbrokers.io. And it's funny enough, this is a browser based Battlefield style game and it looks Minecrafty and it's very simplistic, very blocky. But it's got all the Battlefield mechanics. Uh, it really reminds me a lot in terms of map design as well of Battlefield 2. And while mostly it it is very cute and very arcade and it's just jump in, jump out. If you ever had the, the server lifestyle of Battlefield, you know that's exactly how it is. You just jump from server to server and you just do really ridiculous stuff. And every once in a while, yeah, Battlefield, you do get stuck in a server and you really grind it out. But War Brokers is definitely going to encapsulate that, that sort of casual, you know, a more chaos filled uh, environment that Battlefield can be known for. So if you really want a casual Battlefield experience, maybe you really enjoyed Battlefield Heroes and Fortnite isn't really doing it for you. Warbrokers.io is absolutely up your alley. The next game to talk about is technically in a kind of different genre, but that's uh, Planet Side 2. Now, while Planet Side 2 isn't as popular as it used to be, it's still a really radical game to play. Planet Side 2 is a full MMO, and you're going to have a lot, a lot of those battlefield moments constantly. And there might actually be too much chaos sometimes, and then other times it's too little. The fluctuation of the player base and, and with the distribution of players around the map uh, can affect how you play. But at the same time, if you understand that sort of a gameplay mentality, because it is a much bigger map, and it is a technical, you know, much larger player base um, or player count, then Planet Side 2 can be really fun. You jump in, you need to join the comms, join a group, uh, which you can actually do very easily within the game. You don't have to do any weird forums or Discord thing. Uh, and then just, you know, follow the calls. Uh, try to play as a team, try to play as a group, and you're going to see the true shine of Planet Side 2 is something that you'll never get in any other game, including Battlefield, but definitely Battlefield players. You see a lot of YouTubers who play Battlefield play Planet Side 2. You definitely see a lot of people talk about Planet Side 2 and how they wish there was a third one or what have you. Not a perfect game by any means, especially because it is trying to be a full MMO. But for a sci-fi, you know, big team battle shooter, um, guys, there, there are no others, including the 2142 Battlefield just doesn't really exist anymore. So th this is it. And finally, for Battlefield, it's going to be Heroes and Generals, a game that claims itself to be an MMO, but it's actually nothing like Planet Side 2. It just has this strange meta map and supply chain kind of thing going on. Uh, but overall, Heroes and Generals is going to be emulating the more historic battlefields. It's a historic shooter and you're going to have stuff like bicycles, older tanks and a lot of older weapons. And in fact, really, there's not that many free to play historical shooters that don't heavily rely on role play to be anything fun at all. Heroes and Generals generally runs very well as well, and it looks pretty gorgeous, uh, even for the time. This is way, back in the day, well, we would probably consider this a AAA free to play game. It's showing its age just a little bit. But overall, if you want kind of a more clunky and dirtier first person shooter that has big team battles, 
then that's this game. There's so very little in this genre, paid or otherwise, that I'm surprised that it doesn't get talked about more. But of course, this is a pretty focused niche. So yeah, but if you really loved the older battlefields and you liked a lot of the older shooters, like older Call of Duties and things like that, we're starting to see kind of a resurgence of the historical shooter. And I think heroes and generals shouldn't be slept on anymore. Next up, we have Factorio. Factorio is a fantastic game that really came onto the scene and was responded to very well by so many people that you really wouldn't expect. Seemingly, what looks like a niche title, it looks like all of the Roller Coaster Tycoon players and a lot of like the grand strategy players. It's just been a while since we've had some really big epic management games. And then all of a sudden we started getting games like They Are Billions and Frostpunk. And we started to have a really fantastic time with a lot of PVE style real-time strategy and management games. So Factorio, it's there. It's basically just like the name would kind of allude to. It's all about efficiency, creating, uh, you know, your factory of sorts and resource management. And I have actually found a really fantastic game that's totally free that you might even prefer because of how instantaneous it is to get in. Or maybe it's a great game to actually use as a jumping off point. But Factorio, it's pretty intense. It's also like 30 bucks. So keep that in mind. I definitely can see why you might want a free to play alternative. And I got it for you. And that game is Mindistry. This game has been taking over my life. I've actually just now completed the campaign. If you guys want a full review, I could absolutely do that. And the really awesome thing is I'm playing on mobile and it's totally free on mobile. That means no advertisements. That means no spam of any kind for, you know, advertisements or a cash shop. There's, there's nothing like that. It's just a totally free game. It's also free on PC on itch.io. But if you go on Steam, you'll see that it's like four bucks or something like that. You do get access to some extra features and I believe an easier access to the modding scene. But all of the other forms do have that as well. Even the mobile, which can even have multiplayer, which you can actually set up a server yourself and just jam to. It's a fully featured free to play game and especially on mobile devices. It runs fantastically, though. Be aware of the pause feature. You're going to need that because of, you know, touch controls. But overall, this is a game that I really, really love. If you love tower defense games, which is something that I can kind of get addicted to. But then also I am a roller coaster tycoon player, the management and the efficiency systems. So combine that with tower defense, addictive gameplay that's just constantly evolving. It's really fantastic. And also speaking about constantly evolving, this is a game that has multiple maps, multiple levels, level editor, all that good stuff. And as you slowly play the game, you level up and you get a different technologies and you, you constantly are expanding and the difficulty is scaling at really just so balanced so well. Overall, as a game, I think it's just designed very, very well. It's a really refined game about refining. Now we're halfway through the video, but I'm going to slap down a big boy and that's going to be Smash Bros. So Smash Bros is a game I'm getting back into again. Uh, it's it's so complex. You know, every character has all these ridiculous nuances, memorizing the frame data and uh, you know, all the different combos that you can do at different percentages, uh, different times during the battlefield. And then just playing it casually, there's so much content. I'm just now getting to the end of the campaign, which was honestly a little too long, but still really engrossing. Like there's there's so much content in Smash that I've I've kind of allowed myself to take it slow with it. Uh, my most played character is Ridley because I don't know. I just he just seems fun. You know, I like the grab. It's really aggressive. Um, Pikachu is really fun. And there's a few that I've really gravitated towards that you, you really don't have that gameplay in any other type of fighting game whatsoever. But there are some other platform fighters out there that compete with Smash Bros, refining certain aspects to an extent, though Smash Bros is objectively the best overall in most ways. <laughs> um, but, you know, they simplify others or maybe they're a little bit more casual or they're free to play. Um, and I think well, one thing that could deter some players from Smash, um, which kind of happened to me, even though I like eSport games, is that it is so complex, actually. And um, while it can be fun and casual and chaotic, there's really like no in between. It's just full chaos or it's full competitive. And I think I found a game that's free, easy to get into, that's somewhere in between, and it's definitely earned its popularity for that. And that game is Brawlhalla. Brawlhalla is the second most popular platform fighter, and it really has earned that because it's totally free and very fair, as well as it's a game that can run on any machine. Unless you're like the lowest end Chromebook, it's going to run on your PC or whatever. Actually, it's on consoles, too. So incredibly easy in terms of barrier to entry for being free to play. Um, its mechanics are also very straightforward and also it's just available to, to anybody anywhere 
It's also something that's being constantly promoted, uh, where on their YouTube channel, you know, they actually still do videos, talk about updates, they're constantly updating the game, even like partnering with like Adventure Time and weird stuff like that, which isn't uncommon. Platform fighters do have lots of uh, guest stars from like the Hyper Light Drifter characters or Shovel Knight or something like that. Um, but all those cost a lot of money and those DLCs cost big freaking bucks. And by then you might as well play Smash Bros because you got uh, just so much content and then it's also tournament ready. Brawlhalla also has those tournaments, pushes that sort of eSport-esque thing. Obviously not as big as Smash Bros, but I just really appreciate that uh, compared to the entire rest of the genre. It's really only Smash Bros and Brawlhalla. Those are the two only platform fighters that kind of matter at the moment. So Brawlhalla is uh, actually also the most unique compared to every other game out there. Why well, I can actually name unique characters from one platform fighter to the other and little differences they have. They're all directly inspired by Smash Bros, where Brawlhalla is like, okay, it's not a Smash Bros clone. This is a platform fighter. Uh, it is actually very different. A lot of the moves and how you play in general is very different. It is the most different. And I actually do like how they took inspiration from Smash Bros item dropping mechanic, and they made that the core fighting mechanic inside of Brawlhalla. So uh, weapons actually drop and every character has two different weapons that they can gain and then they switch between and you do different combos with these weapons. And yeah, I really appreciate the very strange way that that plays where you have to move around the map and control the map with that in, in mind. So the art style is not for everyone, but again, gotta really celebrate the fact that anybody can play this anywhere, anytime. And I found overall that it's a more forgiving game. Playing any map and any character in Brawlhalla is like playing the most basic and easiest characters inside of Smash Bros, which is a double-edged sword, obviously, but if you want a middle of the road of like pseudo casual and competitive platform fighter that actually has players playing it, well, your only choice is Brawlhalla and luckily it's free. Okay, so Diablo, historically a monumental franchise and whether you love it or just think it's okay, Diablo 3 is a really big game and I personally really enjoy it on PS4 for the couch co-op. I really don't understand why a lot of PC games don't do couch co-op, but anyways, Diablo is the isometric grimdark looter action RPG. And it definitely has in recent years turned away from maybe what made it historically so potent. But with Diablo 4, I think we're all very excited for it to go back to its sort of darker roots. Uh, but overall, for a grinder game, you know, lots of different fun builds that you can play around with. And yeah, if you want a one and done the story, you can absolutely do that and play Diablo casually. But there's a million billion different kind of games that have different flavors and what have you. And some are buy to play and many, many, many are actually free to play. But there is actually one king that everyone knows and loves, uh, which I mean, you guys probably already know. Yeah, Path of Exile, that should have been seen coming a mile away. But Path of Exile is just undoubtedly the king of not just like free to play Diablo likes, but debatably better than Diablo. And in my personal opinion, this is just me, but yeah, it's better. Uh, namely because what you want to do in a game like this is play for the loot and Path of Exile's loot system with its paper doll and namely its gems and then uh, the, the passive skill tree thing that they got going on. Uh, it's mind boggling. It's insane uh, what you can do in this game in terms of customization and the different builds. Uh, it's well, really you, you should look up some videos. I'm going to play some gameplay, but really just showing off this game and uh, you see all the swaths of spells and things. You still have no idea of the true potential of this game, just how colorful it can get with the amount of choice and customization that you have as a player. Now, with that, there is a little bit of a detriment. You can make really awkward builds. You can make some poor builds. You can make poor decisions, but that's part of the gamification. But I don't want to deter you. While Path of Exile is actually a competitive game, it is a game that is pretty serious uh, and sincere when it comes to its RPG elements uh, with the building and stuff like that. It just, it, you know, you might need to look up some guides, but at the same time, even if you don't, if you just play it casually and you just want to one and done it, I love the poetic story, I love the darkness of the world setting, and this island that you're on, that you're thrown to, that you're exiled to, actually is so rich in lore. Um, the overall sort of playable first player experience is really, really well done. You might hit a few walls, that's just how the genre is, but Path of Exile does give you the tools to kind of build around it if you give it your time. 
which people who play this genre, seems like you guys have a lot of time to spend. So maybe while it's not as co-op-y and silly friendly as Diablo 3, Path of Exile is still a fantastic game that you can optionally play online. The trading scene is actually pretty alive and it is far more expansive than any game that I've seen of recent times, maybe debatably comparing it to Warframe for sure. So if you want an action RPG with a lot of loot that just keeps on giving, that's Path of Exile. And in terms of free to play and fairness, it's the most fair. OK, and finally, the last game that I want to mention is Overwatch. In recent times, we've actually had a few clonish style games that have released. Um, many of them actually were super unique and I really enjoyed them, but actually most of them shut down. Rest in peace, Gigantic. I actually loved you, but Overwatch is a game that just stands so, so tall. Uh, everything else is just completely in shadowed. Uh, Overwatch now has custom games. Uh, it's going to have Overwatch 2, which is a new co-op component, um, which you do have to actually rebuy. And Overwatch Competitive is so fantastic. I'm actually a little bit fanatical. I even flew to LA for its day one of the uh, opening of its esports circuit. A phenomenal experience. I definitely suggest if you've never been, go to an esport event. There's something so hype about it. And I have no doubt, you know, go to a local fighting game tournament if you have to, but Overwatch is seriously sick. Uh, definitely check it out. Um, but overall, Overwatch does have some things that maybe some people would find lacking in terms of just being able to jump in and play. In most ways, I really feel like it's almost perfect. But that price point, especially with Overwatch 2 coming out and you have to buying that, um, you know, it, it kind of is a lot of money for some people. And then Overwatch itself is such a rigid and very sporty style of game that it could be kind of scary. So what's a game that does what Overwatch does and aims to be what Overwatch is while still just kind of being sillier and lets anybody play for free? Right. So some people might have thought Paladins would be it. And it is. <laughs> uh, it's not Team Fortress 2. Technically, in my opinion, Team Fortress 2 is actually a different genre uh, that's really more of a class based game that had, it just had more focus on characters than ever before and obviously inspired this now new genre of hero shooter. And Paladins is the game that originally actually was more inspired by kind of a mixture of Team Fortress 2 and Guild Wars. But then Overwatch was blossoming and uh, Paladins was like, actually, we're going to we're basically going to do everything that you're doing. And then they switched up their gameplay immensely. And then once they became a little too clony, it got some criticism. They started really evolving their card system. So let's namely talk about that. Basically, Paladins is free to play Overwatch. You could consider it a clone, but it does have one defining feature that changes the game. Literally comparing to Overwatch, where you pick a hero and they have a set defined amount of abilities and stuff and things they can do, uh, and then you can actually switch those heroes at any time. This is more MOBA inspired, where you have one character and then throughout the game you acquire new items. And then also you have a customization loadout system, which is inspired by Call of Duty uh, with, with kind of utilizing cards, a card system. So Paladins is a game where you have a hero, a character, maybe it's like Makoa, a tank where you're playing like Ceres, uh, so it's support, uh, very focused on the tank, damage, flank, and then healer support roles, uh, very rigid in terms of its role play. But when you actually get into that role, the customization of how you play that is way far more flexible than Overwatch. So at first glance, it just seems kind of like stamped. It's like, OK, free to play Overwatch. Boom, done. Um, but it's actually a little bit more and at the same time, a little bit less. So, yeah, it's a little jankier. It's a little glitchier, uh, maybe more, much more than just a little. But Paladins does actually have a little bit of a sporty scene. It does have a little bit of a competitive edge, kind of somewhere like I guess you can reminisce it like Brawlhalla, where it's like it's both casual and competitive, but it's not in, you know, it's not going to be the overall outstanding direction that Overwatch is incredibly casual, custom games and incredibly competitive with its esports circuit. It's just somewhere in between as well as just being easy to get into. Overall, though, if I had to compare it directly to specific characters in Overwatch, which is why you might play these games, I play all these different hero shooters for specific characters. I think Paladins does some better. Yeah, they're inspired by Overwatch, um, but we're also starting to see Overwatch being inspired by Paladins. I honestly think Bomb King is a more fun Junkrat. I think Maeve is a more fun Genji. And, uh, you know, sometimes they're worse, like, you know, their archers worse than Hanzo, etc. Uh, it's a give and take, but um, I really enjoy certain characters in Paladins and I'm going to play Paladins, even though I think it's not as competitive a game or at the same time, it, it lacks like custom games and things like that or PVE mode. Um, but there's still a lot of reasons to play Paladins. And if you just want to jump in and just have a good time, a good first person shooter that has a lot of fun mechanics that can evolve every single game 
and it's free to play? Whew, Paladin's, Paladin's got a lot of content to play through. And in terms of it's free to play, yeah, there is a grind, that's for sure. But overall, it's a very fair game. It's definitely come a long way. And uh, High res is the kind of company that's more of a quantity over quality style thing. But for a lot of reasons, that's actually a really good thing. And I always come back to Paladins. It's my most streamed game for a reason. Despite me, I'm going to say I like Overwatch more. But the power of free to play compels me. And I think it does you too. But alright guys, that's going to be it. I picked five for today and hopefully maybe next week and the week after that we can continue this series and talk about some really awesome alternatives to different games. I love comparing and contrasting games. That's why I do my reviews as list videos. I obviously take them a little bit more seriously and I inject more emotion than other people in that. So hopefully that's OK with you guys. But if you enjoy that style of content creation, I got you. you know, it's going to keep coming. I'm going to keep the hype alive and hopefully you do too. So bump the thumb if you guys like this stuff and hopefully you found a new game. I really, really want to promote Mindistry. Definitely check that out as well as War Brokers. That's, you know, some good stuff. So yeah, maybe some obvious stuff here in there. I'm just trying to do my due diligence, but I am just trying to find new games um, and try to convince you guys to have new experiences that maybe you've just, uh, you know, been a little weary of. Don't be. Give it a shot. Read a book a day play a different game a day, um, you know, eat new food every day. Just do new epic shit all the time, guys. It's a new year, new games, new you, right? Or something. I don't know. Try, trying to inject more morality and more meaning into it. Then it's just silly, fun games. Or maybe it's not. Maybe it does mean more. It means more to me. So if it does you too, then sub. Um, and, you know, much love. <laughs> My name is Skylance, and I'll see you in the next one.